Okay, so we're going to use the control. We're going to use the control volume approach. So there's four grid blocks. This center one is the one we're going to assume is our control volume. We'll call it IJ, right? So that then this is I plus one J. This is I minus one comma J. This is I comma J minus one. And this is I comma J plus one. Right? So I just pulled four grid blocks out of the out of the entire grid. And we're going to write control volume. We're going to write user control volume purge to write it. Um, so now, I'm gonna, just like we did before, I'm going to write the fluxes. By the way, I, I do remember in this class, when we wrote, when we did this in 1D, in the, ver the final set of equations, there was some kind of apparent sign error. You guys remember that? Anyway, it was because when, when you do these control volume projects, you, you need to just choose a convention where everything's going in or everything's going out. And I think what I did was, was I wrote that on, from the left things were going in and on the right things were going out, and that, that caused a sign error. So when you do this, you just want to write your vectors, you know, that something positive is going in, something negative is going out. So you want to write your flux vectors like that, and things will work out a little better. So these also Qs have similar labels. Right, so this is going to be QI plus a half comma J. This is going to be Q, QI J plus a half. This is going to be QI J minus a half. This is going to be QI minus a half comma J. We could also write these in terms of L's if we want, right? So just, you know, while this is the I, J minus one grid block, it, we could also call it the L minus NX grid block. We could call this one the L plus one, L minus one, L plus NX. Okay, so for our mass balance, we need to write the flux in and out. Right? And those guys are Q, I minus a half. Now we have Tx, I minus a half. Or Tx. I'm writing it both ways, in terms of the I's or in terms of L. So that's the one. Ty, the transmissibility in the y direction.
this one. Sorry, this is kind of painfully explicit. That's the flux in and out. We also have the accumulation. It's similar to what we had before. It's just we, before we only had an ith grid block, now we have an ij grid block. So that's the accumulation term, and then just for completeness, we'll write out everything. So the mass balance on IJ for L, IV for Pro, is equal to accumulation all that minus any QL for so that's any sources so again so this is What's coming into the block from the left, this is what's coming into it from the right, this is what's coming into it from the bottom, from the top, this is the accumulation, and this is uh, sources or sinks. So we still have to make a decision on whether we want to evaluate these pressures at the n or the n plus 1 time step. And that would give us our implicit or explicit method. But ultimately, we have the same structure. You can see that if I were to just remove the y's, right, so the j equals 1, if I just remove those guys, then I just have back the one-dimensional equation again, assuming that tx is t. And so what we'll see <coughs> What we'll see next time is, you know, how to compute these <coughs> transmissibilities. But again, they're, they're really no different than the transmissibility we've already computed. It's just now, in addition to computing one, you know, from left and right in one dimension, you also have to compute one top and bottom and for the y dimension. But the equations are identical in terms of, you know, how you treat the harmonic averaging of the permeabilities or whatever. <coughs> So 
we'll stop there today. Have a good weekend.